Good morning, I'm Dr. Heba Gandum, and our lecture today is Acute Otitis Media. How do we define acute otitis media? It's the acute inflammation of the mucosal lining of the middle ear cleft. What is the middle ear cleft? Middle ear cavity, nasopharynx anteriorly, and mastoid air cells posteriorly. So inflammation uh, of the um, mucosal lining of the middle ear cleft is called acute otitis media. How does the infection reach the uh, middle ear cleft? The infection can reach the middle ear cleft. The commonest route is through the ostachian tube here. Spread of infection along the ostachian tube and reaches the middle ear cavity. But what are the sources of infection that can cause uh, the spread along the ostachian tube? First, the first source uh, is uh, upper respiratory tract infection, acute rhinitis, acute sinusitis, or adenoiditis. These can act as a source of infection that can spread along the uh, ostachian tube. Another source of infection is uh, a postnasal pack, uh, in cases, as in cases of epistaxis. If, if, um, if the pack is left for more than 24 hours without any antibiotics, the stagnant uh, secretions will uh, act as a source of infection that can spread along the ostachian tube to the middle ear. Uh, another source of infection, swimming or diving in infected pools, and a final last source of infection is the vomitus or the milk regurg. Uh, up through the nasopharynx to the ostachian tube also uh, is another source of infection uh, that can cause otitis, uh, acute otitis media. Um, and remember that um, ostachian tube in children, as we earlier said in the lecture of the anatomy, is wider, shorter, and more horizontal in children, and this allows the easy access of the sources of infection to the middle ear. A second, less common route of infection is uh, through the external auditory canal. The patient have undo a traumatic perforation of the, the, of the drum during bathing or during swimming, or if the doctor doesn't know that he has um, a perforation in the tympanic membrane, wa'amalu ear wash, this can be a route of infection. A third, very rare um, uh, route of infection is bloodborne infection in exanthemata, yani e exanthemata, yani conditions with uh, fever and rash, they in measles and whooping cough, um, a bloodborne infection, but this is very rare. What are the causative organisms that can cause acute otitis media? Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, and Moraxella cateralis, more common in children. Uh, in some cases, uh, viral infection can precede the bacterial infection in about 20% of cases. What are the pathological stages of acute otitis media? The first stage is the stage of salpingitis or uh, tubal catarrh. What happens in this stage? The mucosal lining of the ostachian tube becomes edematous and hypremic, and this causes obstruction of the ostachian tube and uh, thus creating uh, a negative pressure in the middle ear cavity. Uh, the second stage is the stage of uh, cataral otitis media, acute cataral otitis media or hypremia. The hypremia and the, uh, and the edema will spread to the mucosal lining of the middle ear cavity and um, this edema and hypremia will, will result in a serious exudit inside uh, the cavity accumulating uh, in the middle ear. Uh, the, third, uh, the third stage of uh, sapur the stage of uh, sapurative otitis media or a stage of sapuration. Uh, in this stage, uh, the exudit is converted into a mucoperlant discharge. This is followed by this, the fourth stage, the stage of perforation. Um, the increased pressure inside the middle ear cavity will cause pressure necrosis in parts uh, of the tympanic membrane in the pars tensa, uh, and this causes uh, a central perforation in the tympanic membrane. Then uh, there are the two other stages, the stage of complication and the stage of resolution. Stage of complication can even result 
can even occur before uh, perforation and the stage of resolution can start in any of the previous stages uh, if we start adequate treatment. What is the clinical picture of acute otitis media? Uh, the clinical picture will correspond to the stage of the pathology. What does this mean? It means that um, according to the stage at which the patient is presenting to your clinic, the symptoms and sign might differ. Uh, during the first stage of the disease, uh, during the stage of tubal catar, uh, the symptoms are hearing loss and tinnitus. Uh, what about the signs? The signs you will find upon examining this patient, uh, signs of retracted tympanic membrane. What, what are the signs of the uh, retracted uh, tympanic membrane? These are very important and you have to know these five signs by heart. Um, the first sign is shortened and uh, handle of malleus, uh, prominent lateral process, uh, exaggerated anterior and posterior malleolar folds, distorted or even absent cone of light and uh, finally the restricted mobility of the tympanic membrane by signalization. So these are the five signs that denotes retracted tympanic membrane. Um, what is the other sign that you can find during examination by tuning fork tests? You will find conductive hearing loss. What does this mean? This means that um, upon uh, testing the patient with tuning fork, you will find that the bone conduction in this patient is better than hearing by the bone conduction is better than hearing by air conduction. This is the first stage. What about the second stage, the cataral otitis media, the acute cataral otitis media? In this uh, stage, um, in addition to the hearing loss and tinnitus uh, from the first stage, we'll add another symptom, uh, dull aching pain, dull aching pain in the ear. Um, this is because, uh, because of the exudate, if you remember in the pathological stage, uh, in this stage the, 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 the negative pressure causes the accumulation of a serious exudate inside the middle ear cavity. It's not pus, that's why it's not a throbbing pain, it's just dull aching pain. Uh, what are the signs? You will find hyperemia of the tympanic membrane, especially at the periphery and uh, at the handle of malleus, in addition to uh, the uh, conductive hearing loss by tuning fork testing. The third stage is the stage of separative otitis media, uh, where the, the exudate is uh, transformed into a mucoperulent discharge, so there is pus right now uh, inside the middle ear cavity. Uh, how will this affect uh, the patient? Um, the symptoms, the patient will definitely develop fever, anorexia, headache, and uh, malaise. Uh, and the local symptoms, uh, now you will find the pain, instead of the dull aching pain, there will be a severe throbbing uh, uh, ear ache, uh, in addition to the hearing loss and tinnitus. Um, if you examine this patient, what are you going to see? The tympanic membrane will be bulging, red tympanic membrane, in addition to the conductive hearing loss if you perform, if you do the tuning fork testing. The fourth stage of um, acute otitis media is the stage of perforation. What are the symptoms uh, of, um, of this stage? Um, the... the the, net, the pressure inside the ear canal, as we earlier said, will cause necrosis and uh, perforation of the tympanic membrane and thus release of the pus uh, from the, the, the middle ear cavity. Uh, this will cause the general symptoms to subside. The fever will subside or diminish. The local symptoms, the otorrhea, the discharge will start and um, the earache as well will disappear because there is no longer uh, throbbing uh, pus inside the middle ear cavity. Uh, the hearing loss and tinnitus will still be there. Uh, what about the signs? Uh, the general sign, uh, the fever subsides, no fever. Uh, local signs, if you examine this patient, you will find a perforated drum uh, in the pars tensa. Uh, inside the external auditory canal, you will find the mucoperulent discharge, and uh, you can also visualize the middle ear mucosa through the perforation 
and it's usually hypremic and edematous. If you perform the tuning fork testing, you will find the conductive hearing loss. What about um, a case with presenting with ruptured tympanic membrane, but still uh, the pain and fever persist? What does this mean? Um, if the pain and fever or fever that persists after the rupture of tympanic membrane, this might denote two things, either a small or high perforation that is not sufficient for the drainage of uh, the discharge from the middle ear cavity, or the, uh, this might also denote the beginning of uh, the stage of complications. Treatment of acute otitis media, uh, this will depend also on the stage. If the patient is presenting before the stage of perforation, then he is advised with rest, light nutrient diet, and uh, plenty of fluids. Uh, you will prescribe medical treatment in the form of antibiotics for 7 to 10, to ten days for the inflammation, analgesics and antipyretics for uh, the pain and fever, and decongested nasal, decongestive nasal drops uh, to relieve the edema around the ostachian tube orifice and thus help in uh, the drainage and aeration of the middle ear cavity. Um, what about surgical treatment? Surgical treatment, uh, what is myringotomy? Myringotomy is an incision done in the tympanic membrane. Um, when is it indicated? Uh, indications of uh, the myringotomy will be the failure of the medical treatment for 48 hours. How do you know that the, the, the medical treatment failed? By uh, the persistent uh, pain and uh, fever. If after 48 hours from the beginning of the medical treatment, still uh, the pain and fever did not subside, then this, this might indicate myringotomy. Another indication is the bulging of the tympanic membrane. In case of bulging uh, tympanic membrane, it's better to do myringotomy. Why is it better? Be to, be, because uh, the healing uh, resulting from myringotomy will be better than healing after a pathological perforation. The third and last uh, indication of myringotomy is the development of uh, complications, whether uh, cranial or intracranial complications. If the patient is presenting after perforation of the tympanic membrane, then again he will be prescribed uh, medical treatment, antibiotics according to the culture and sensitivity, and um, uh, removal of the discharge from um, the external auditory canal by oral toilet, by suction, or by dry mopping. Uh, surgical treatment, the myringotomy, as we earlier said, uh, might be indicated even after perforation of the tympanic membrane. In case the perforation, the pathological perforation is small or high perforation and insufficient for adequate drainage. Acute otitis media in infants and children. What are the predisposing factors that make children more susceptible than adults? First, the root of infection. We mentioned that the commonest route of infection for acute otitis media is the ostachian tube. Ostachian tube in, in infants and children is, as we earlier said, wider, shorter, and more horizontal, so the infection can easily reach the middle ear. Um, what about the sources of infection? Sources of infection are also more common in children, as we earlier mentioned. What, what were the sources of infection? The upper respiratory tract infections uh, which are more common in uh, children. Uh, the infected material, which are uh, whether the milk or the vomitus, uh, the milk um, is more common. Um, the, the children, the bottle fed children, are more susceptible than uh, the breastfed infants. Why? Why is uh, the bottle-fed infant more susceptible to acute otitis media than the breastfed infant because, for two reasons actually, because uh, the, the, during the bottle feeding, uh, the child will be lying in a supine position, and this facilitates the regurge of the milk to the nasopharynx. Um, and the other cause is the bottle milk is um, uh, more liable to get contaminated than definitely the breast milk. 
Um, what about the vomitus? Vomitus uh, gastroenteritis also is more common in infants, and uh, vomitus can thus easily reach the ostachian tube in the supine position. The third predisposing factor is the low uh, general resistance in children in general because of teething and uh, recurrent gastroenteritis. In an infant, what is the clinical picture of acute otitis media? The symptoms, the child will have high fever, vomiting and diarrhea, and this can be mistaken with gastroenteritis, uh, leading to misdiagnosis and delayed diagnosis. Um, also, the child will be very irritable, continuously non-stop crying, and uh, does not sleep well. He will be pulling or rubbing his ears and moving his head from one side to another. Uh, what are the signs? Hypremia in the tympanic membrane. And remember, don't wait for bulging and don't expect bulging of the tympanic membrane in infants as, uh, as we earlier mentioned that the tympanic membrane is thicker than in adults. Treatment of acute otitis media in an infant or in a child is the same as we uh, earlier said, except for the indication of myringotomy. Uh, myringotomy will be indicated after failure of uh, medical treatment for 48 hours. Don't wait for bulging of the tympanic membrane because of the thicker tympanic membrane in children. Uh, why are the complications uh, of acute otitis media more common in children than they are in adults? First of all, uh, first of all uh, delayed diagnosis. Children are susceptible for delayed diagnosis. They cannot um, express their complaint. Uh, they might be uh, misdiagnosed as gastroenteritis. And also, uh, the child has a, a, a thicker tympanic membrane that will resist bulging. And uh, so, um, this might be considered as an absent alarming uh, sign. Also, uh, what are the other reasons for that make chi children more susceptible for complication than adults because of the open uh, cranial sutures uh, this will facilitate the spread of uh, infection and uh, the last point the cause is the low general resistance in uh, in children one of the specific types of acute otitis media is called acute necrotizing otitis media this is a severe form of the disease. It usually affects uh, infants and young children following uh, exanthemata uh, as in measles, the, the, the conditions with, uh, as we earlier said, with fever and rash. Uh, symptoms are severe and lead to necrosis of the tympanic membrane and the ossicles and uh, the child usually presents with um, conductive hearing loss in addition to uh, total or subtotal perforation. Uh, this will end our lecture for today uh, with my best wishes. Thank you.